Thank you. Um, appreciate uh, the Verbo Fiesta Bowl uh, for extending the offer to, the, to TCU and the College Football Playoff Committee. Uh, we're really appreciative and thankful for the opportunity to play against uh, against the University of Michigan, who just happens to be, I believe, the winningest team in college football history. So we're uh, we're excited to be a part of the playoff. Um, you know, we've got a, a fantastic football team. You know, I've been doing this now for over uh, right around 30 years, and this is uh, the most enjoyable football team I've ever coached. Really enjoy being around these these players. Um, they're um, crazy competitive. They have tremendous work ethic. Um, I, I think they embody everything that's good about college football. Very selfless. You know, we were uh, picked seventh in our in the preseason uh, media poll this year in the Big 12. Um, our players have done an incredible job of avoiding distractions and, and didn't pay much attention to the, the preseason rankings. Just as the season rolled along, we didn't pay much attention to the college football rankings or the college football playoff rankings or the Big 12 rankings or any of that. We've just tried to take it one week at a time. Had a heck of a ball game uh, yesterday afternoon against a very good Kansas State team and lost in overtime. And, you know, our players were, uh, were disappointed in the outcome of that game, but at the same time, we're very excited to get the good news today uh, that we're a, a participant in the Fiesta Bowl. So couldn't be more proud of our, our, our players and of TCU and, uh, and our fans, and we're really looking forward to a great game against Michigan. <clears throat> Thank you, Coach. Congratulations on the entire season once again and uh, your appearance here in the Verbo Fiesta Bowl. As we get into the question and answer period, we ask that all people who want to ask a question, please have your camera on and place your name and affiliation in the ID box. We're going to go through the raise your hand function and then we'll call on you, unmute your line, and you can ask your question of Coach Dykes. Do we have any questions? Steven Johnson from the Fort Worth Star Telegram. Steven? Steven, go ahead and unmute your online. Unmute your line. Okay, can you guys hear me now? Yes, we got you. Hey. Hey, uh, we talked to you a couple minutes ago, but now I guess now that the highs come down a little bit, um, I guess what are your first impressions of, of Michigan? You know, honestly, I haven't had a chance uh, to look at much of Michigan so far. Um, watched them a little bit last night. You know, I was um, on kid duty, quite frankly, uh, taking care of uh, some some of my my kids and my daughters and my six year old son and trying to help my wife, Kate, get them to bed and things last night. So I didn't get a, a, a chance to see a lot of them. Uh, the little bit I saw, you know, looked like a very physical um, football team. You know, I think that certainly at the end of the game, you know, they um, were very physically imposing last night against Purdue. Saw their quarterback make a ton of plays, uh, improvise outside the pocket. Was really impressed with the things that he can do. Um, you know, what kind of athlete he was, how accurate he was moving outside of the pocket. And, and they just look like a very, very good football team. You know, defensively, they're what you would expect. Uh, big up front, physical, um, you know, saw the corner number two, uh, had a couple of interceptions, really looked like he was uh, um, a very productive player last night. So it was a big win for Michigan last night against against a good Purdue team. And uh, they look like a very talented football team. As I said, we haven't had a chance to dive in deep yet and, and look at them, but uh, just on the outside looking in, uh, look like a look like a heck of a team. Thank you, Coach. We're going to go with Wes Pruitt from Four Star Sports Media. Wes, hey, Coach. Uh, you know, a year ago, as you know, you were taking the TCU head coaching job, and now a year later, here you are in the college football playoffs with a chance to play for the college football championship. Talk a little bit about what that means to you on a personal level. Yeah, you know, honestly, it's been a little bit of a blur. Uh, you kind of get a job someplace the first year is always a little bit crazy. There's just so much that needs to be done um, from, you know, recruiting to hiring a staff to, to get to know your current team. Um, haven't had a whole lot of time for reflection just because, you know, we had an open date week two and then we've played uh, 11 straight weeks. 
Um, and so, you know, it's just been, you know, try to win a game on Saturday, go to work on Sunday and, and try to prepare as quickly as you can. So, you know, we'll have a little bit more time uh, as we have a little break this week and, and get on the road and go recruiting to, to have a chance to reflect on the season and, and kind of how this, this whole thing, what this whole thing means. And, and so, um, you know, it's been quite a journey in the last year for sure. Um, you know, just can't say enough about these, these players and this team, just their commitment. You know, typically when you take over a program, there's a period of, um, you know, difficulty where you're trying to get to know your players and trying to create trust and a belief in each other. Uh, but really since day one, these guys have, have jumped in. Uh, they've responded incredibly well to all everything we've challenged them with. And that's what makes, I think, this team so unique is just their willingness to do whatever it is that we ask them to do. And, you know, we really trust the players. And I think they trust our staff and, and our support staff and strength and conditioning staff. And, you know, they've done all the little things that we've asked them to do off the field in terms of nutrition and rest and recovery and, you know, supplementation, everything that they can do to, um, you know, give them a, a, a great opportunity to compete on Saturday. And so, it's been a heck of a team to work with up to this point. Couldn't, couldn't be more proud of, of guys than I am this team and, uh, you know, excited for the next challenge. That's one thing that our guys, they don't want anything given to them. They want to earn it. And, uh, and they have that kind of mentality. And, and you know, we'll be, we'll be prepared and excited to play and uh, look forward to it. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you, Coach. Our next question, Brian Estridge from TCU Radio Network. Brian. Coach, when we talked last night, uh, you, you sounded genuinely concerned that you might not get in after that loss. When we asked you, when we said, hey, you, you know, there are a lot of people saying you're going to get in even with the loss. Where was that concern level? Where was your confidence level that you would get in even with, with that game yesterday? You know, Brian, it's hard to say. I mean, I, you know, you just don't ever really know. I think, um, you know, look, being a, I would imagine being a member of the college football playoff committee is a very difficult, uh, very difficult job. I think there's a lot of different things that you have to consider. Um, there's a lot of different voices in the room. There's a lot of different ways for a program to create momentum. I would think with, with some of the players in the room, um, so you just don't know how things are going to go. Um, you know, I, I truly believe that they got it right just from the standpoint of, you know, conference championship games. Um, you know, I don't know that you should be punished for playing in one. And, and I think that, um, you know, I think when you look at our body of work, you look at the, the strength of the Big 12 conference from top to bottom, you know, you look at the metrics and the comparisons and all that, all those things, then you feel pretty good about our situation. But as I said earlier, you just never know how those conversations are going to go. And I'm sure there's other teams that had compelling arguments. Um, but, you know, we were fortunate and, to get in. And, you know, I, I, I had some faith in the committee, but at the same time, you know, this is kind of my first go around through all this. And, you know, I think TCU's had a little bit of bad history, um, you know, with 2014, but I just felt like it was a different time and a different place and a different set of circumstances. So, again, appreciate the committee's faith in, in our program. Thank you, Brian. Next up, Michael Cohen, Fox Sports. And once again, before Michael goes, if you can try and use the raise your hand function on the bottom, there's reactions and use the raise your hand function and please put your name and affiliation in the box. Brian or Michael, you're up. Hey, Sonny, um, when you were at Arizona and Jim was at Stanford, do you remember anything about those games? And did you guys develop much of a relationship during that time? You know, I remember they were really good. Uh, they had, uh, had some really good players, Andrew Luck and, and uh, some, some guys that were really, really good football players. Um, you know, they had a, a really physical football team. I think that's the one trademark of, of Jim Harbaugh teams. Um, you know, certainly Stanford and, and I would assume Michigan as well. You know, they're going to be tough, physical, hard-nosed football teams. I think that's, you know, that's Jim's mentality. And, and I think that's, you know, why he's been so successful. His teams always play hard. They're going to be well-coached. They're going to be physical. And, 
you're going to be competitive and play tough. And, and those are all key ingredients to having a good football team. You know, I don't know Jim that well, been around him on a number of occasions, but, um, you know, look forward to getting to know him better through the process and have a lot of respect for him as a, as a player and, or as a coach and, and what he's done at, at Michigan. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Coach Dennis Dodd from CBS Sports. Dennis. Hey, Sonny, congratulations. Um, I wonder who you, who or what you're leaning on to get through this schedule and get ready for this game. It, you know, little things like you have to scout the other game. Um, motivation is different than a bowl game. You're playing for a national championship. Have you thought about that? Um, go ahead. Yeah, Dennis, thanks. Uh, thanks for the question. Yeah. Um, you know, we're just kind of getting into it. Um, as I said earlier, I haven't had much time to kind of sit back and reflect. We, we put together a couple of different schedules last week, you know, depending on, you know, what bowl game we got into and, and we're just, you know, just kind of hitting the ground running uh, with, with those type of things. We're doing meetings with players today and, and then we're going to hit the road and start recruiting here pretty quickly uh, this evening as well. So, you know, there'll be some people that I reach out to some, some, you know, people in the industry that have been through this before and try to pick their brain the best that I can. While at the same time, you know, we want to be consistent in what we do in terms of, of our players. I think that's been part of our success this season has really been just the, um, you know, the consistency and the approach that we've taken day in, day out. So, you know, we'll probably try to combine a little bit of that, you know, pick, pick some brains of some folks that have been through it. Um, you know, see if they learn something going through it once or twice before, and then uh, see if we can't try to build the best mousetrap that we can uh, to play well. And, and then if I could uh, follow up, how, how do you evaluate defensive linemen, especially interior guys, in terms of how long do you want them? You know, how, how much stamina do you want them to have? What's your rotation? Uh, because those kind of guys can make one play a game, and that makes it worth it. Um, yeah. you know, to wreck a yeah. game. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. I think, you know, I think we would all like to have enough depth to be able to roll guys through. It's one of the things that, that we're fortunate to have. You know, I don't know that we have any uh, players that, you know, are um, high NFL draft picks or any of that. You know, Dylan Horton, I think we'll have an opportunity to play in the NFL. Um, you know, we've got a, a young player or two that I think uh, has, has an opportunity to develop into really a good player. But, you know, we're kind of um, a defensive front by committee. That seems to be uh, what served us well this year is to, to play a number of players and, and um, try to keep them as fresh as possible and let them, you know, let them really sell out every single play and know that they're going to get a rest. And so we, we try to roll guys. We feel like we've got a really good group and we're probably better collectively than we are individually. Um, but it's a, it's, it's, a, it's a group that, again, has, has been – really, really solid and, and certainly going to need to be solid because that's a, a group for us that's going to have to hold up against a really good Michigan offensive line. Great. See you in the desert. Good luck. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dennis. Jeremy Clark from 247 Sports. Jeremy. Hey, Coach. Congratulations. You, you guys mentioned about going out on the recruiting trail and, and, and seeing some recruits. How much does this help you guys – that you now get to go into these homes and you can say to these recruits and their families, you can come to TCU and have a chance to play for a national championship. You guys have now set the tone as a, as a college playoff football uh, program. How do you uh, approach that in recruiting? Yeah, Jeremy, I think it's a, I think it's a game changer, quite frankly. Uh, you know, I think that's, that's everybody's message. I think the only difference is now, you know, now it, it's something that's come to fruition for us uh, is, is getting to the, get in the 14 playoff. And, you know, if it can happen one time, then it can certainly happen again. And um, yeah, I think it's going to be a game changer. I really do. I think that there's already a high level of interest uh, from, from some really good players across Texas and across the country. And I think this is going to do nothing but enhance our, our ability to go and recruit some of the best football players in the country. You know, I believe TCU and the city of Fort Worth sells itself. Um, you know, I think as, as these players get to know, our coaches and our current players, they're going to be very impressed with what kind of people that we have in our organization. And obviously when you can also sell the fact that, look, we're going to have an opportunity to play for a national championship that, um, you know, it's really all you can ask for. And so I, I think that's, that's going to be a huge feather in our, in our cap. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Jeremy. <clears throat> 
Once again, if you have a question, please use the raise your hand function on Zoom and turn your camera on and let us know and we will try and get you in the mix. I did just put in the uh, chat function, uh, the media room on fiestable.org is now active. That will house all of our transcripts, videos, um, game notes. The application for credentials is in there too. So the application for credentials is due by next Wednesday, the 14th of December to come on out here to Arizona. We hope you all do. Uh, right now we have a question from Matt Treconelli from Herb FM Sports Radio. Matt? Yeah, hi coach. Um, yeah, just, just talk about some, um, like your season overall and like what are some things you can do to improve when you do go ahead and play uh Michigan? Yep. Um yeah, you know, we have played a lot of uh, tight football games like like we did yesterday uh, afternoon in, in the Big 12 championship. Played a uh, an Oklahoma State team early in the year and went to a double overtime and won that game in second overtime. Um so we've had a couple of overtime games, had a couple of games that were you know, came down to the bitter end. Obviously, Baylor would kick the field goal the last play of the game to win that one. So we've had some tough, uh, you know, competitive games in the Big 12, and that's what you would expect. I, I truly believe from top to bottom it's the most competitive conference in college football. Uh, there's just no layups. You know, everybody's, everybody's very competitive. The preseason team that was picked last was Kansas, and – Kansas had a, had a really good year and was ranked in the top 25. It's going to a bowl game. Uh, so it just shows you what kind of, uh, what kind of league that we have. It's, it's a, it's a grind every week. Um, you know, so really, really uh, pleased to, to get through undefeated, you know, wish that we could have finished it off with uh, by winning the, the championship game yesterday. You know, there's some things that we got to get better at. Obviously we had a, a goal line situation in yesterday's game that we need uh, to, to be able to get the ball in the end zone and over time we got stuffed on third and fourth down inside the one. That's obviously something that we've got to, to get improved. Um, you know, and, and just overall, you know, I think that we're, we're headed to a good place defensively. You know, it's a new scheme for us in, in the first year. I think our defense gets more and more comfortable every single week. Um, you know, gave up probably more, more big plays than we're accustomed to. Uh, yesterday, um, and also turn the ball over more than we're accustomed to yesterday. And all those things contributed to us losing that football game. And so those are things that we have to get fixed and corrected and things that have been uncharacteristic for this team this year. And again, that's why we've had the kind of success that we have. So we've got plenty to work on. We'll utilize our 15 practices and, and make sure that we uh, we address those areas of concern and, and make sure that we improve. Okay, thanks, Coach. Good luck. Okay, thank you very much. We'll go with Jack Magruder from yesterday.com.org, excuse me. <laughs> yeah, Coach, uh, talk about that comeback mentality. What what sparks that, and, and how does a team do all that every game after game? Yeah, yeah, you know, I think that, that really comes from, you know, dedication and hard work um, and confidence. I think that, you know, confidence to me is always a result of being prepared and 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 then working incredibly hard for something. I think that gives you a, an ability to, to have a never say die attitude because you know that you're prepared. You know that you've put the work in. And, and I think this team certainly feels that way. I think we, you know, we feel like we're capable of beating anybody. Uh, we feel like we have enough talent. We feel like we've worked hard enough. We feel like that we've done everything we can do to, <clears throat> to go out and to play well. And so, you know, we don't get too high. I think that's one of the big things that I love about this team. When things are going well, you know, we stay grounded. And at the same time, when things aren't going well, we, we keep chipping away. And I think that's a big part of, you know, being able, being able to overcome some adversity in football games. Uh, it's going to happen every single week. You're going to have bad things that happen. And you have to have that true belief in each other and that confidence in the man next to you uh, to be able to overcome it. And, and this team's had that. <coughs> Excuse me. Thank you. All good, Coach. Thank you very much. And